Pythonistas, you can do pipx uh, run CC sessions. Boom, you'll enter the interactive installer. Node homies, you can also do MPX CC sessions. Then that will also enter the same interactive installer, except it's written in JavaScript. It's gonna ask you, is this your first time using CC sessions? You can say yes or no. In this case, let's say no. Have you used this new version? For migration purposes, we need to know, but also if you have used uh, this version before, you can also migrate your config from another repo or another folder on your on your drive. Let's just say no. So the first thing it's gonna ask, git branch. What's your default git branch? Because you're gonna do tasks. We're gonna create task branches and then we're gonna merge back into whatever your default is. So I'm just gonna put main for here. And then is it a mono repo or a super Super repo do you have sub modules i'm going to put mono repo now when completing tasks when we're committing would you like me to stage all files all changes or would you like me to selectively ask you what files to stage i'm going to just put stage all do you want commit messages to be detailed conventional or simple i'm going to put detailed when you're completing tasks automatically merge to main or you want me to ask i'm going to just say auto merge ask me if i want to push claude should call you what what's your name i'm going to put toast detected os linux that's correct, bash, that's correct. And then here is where you can add CLI tools that you use to read files. The reason being is that when Claude is in discussion mode, he's not gonna be able to use tools that are write-like. So if you have CLI tools you use frequently, we've included most of them, meaning they're always approved no matter the mode, you can add them here. For instance, I might put um, Z. I'm gonna press enter, that's added that to our read-only commands. You can also do write-like commands, things that should always be blocked in discussion mode. Now, if you, we don't recognize a command, it's not in read-only, it's not in write-like, we don't know what it is, do you want us to block it automatically? I'm gonna put extra safe on. Then in discussion mode, what Claude code tools would you like blocked? I don't want any of these additionally blocked, so I'm gonna go with the defaults. And then you have trigger phrases. And this is where I highly recommend that you customize based on what you want to use as your trigger phrases. So let's do customize. You can set different trigger phrases. This one is for switching from discussion mode to implementation mode, switching from we're talking about a problem to you're allowed to do what you proposed about the problem. So for this, mine is your, then we have a discussion mode trigger. There's a task creation trigger phrase. There is a task start trigger phrase, start this task, and then you at the task. There is a task completion trigger phrase. Hey, I think we're done with this task. Let's wrap it up. And there's context compaction. I use squish. That's the default. We include a status line, pretty good status line. You can select to include it, or you can use your own and ask Claude later to incorporate some of our state into your status line, whatever you wanna do. But I'm just gonna say yes, use our status line. This requires a little explanation. We work in tasks, okay? So you're gonna create task files, you're gonna start those tasks when you're ready to do them, and then you're going to work on them in task branches. If you work on a file that's in a Git repo that's not in a task branch, do you want us to block that? It's an additional guardrail, it makes sure that Claude doesn't edit files that are not part of the task, which can happen. You can put enabled or disabled, I'm just gonna put enabled. Um, if you're using Using an alternative VCS, you shouldn't you shouldn't have enabled at all. Auto UltraThink adds UltraThink to every message. It just improves performance. If you have a max X20 subscription, I recommend keeping this on. If you're budget conscious or limit conscious, you can turn it off. I'm gonna keep it enabled. Nerd fonts, if you have nerd fonts installed, you can do that. If you want an emoji fallback, you can do that. And if your terminal doesn't support emojis, you can do ASCII. Okay, I'm gonna do nerd fonts. And then do you want Claude to be warned to suggest compacting context at 85% and 90%, 90% only or never? I'm gonna do 85 and 90. Um, okay, and then do you wanna take Kickstart? Kickstart's an interactive tutorial. It's basically once you start up Claude, he'll be told, hey, run Kickstart. And he will start teaching you about CC sessions by getting you to use it. It's like 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how fast you zoom through it. And it's pretty useful. If you've never used this system before, it'll teach you how to use it. But so will this video. So I'm just going to put no skip tutorial, but you should take kickstart. It's good. <laughs>here to a folder that I'm actually doing stuff in and we'll strike up Claude so I can show you how I as the person who created the system you're using and use it myself use it okay so when we do session start because of the way the system works it takes all of the tasks in our task folder which is part of sessions and it reports them I work in a super repo with like five or six different services in it so there's different concerns and tasks might group into these concerns so we have task indexes 
And so at session start, it shows you, hey, here's all your task indexes. You can see CC sessions framework. You can see um, custom GPT and knowledge base. Okay, so this is all of our tasks that are in the task folder and they're organized. Just all the ones that are pending that haven't been, that haven't been completed yet. You'll see here if you have the status line that you're in discuss or implement modes, okay? So if you're in discussion mode and Claude can't do anything except read files, you can say uh, any of your trigger phrases for implementation mode. For the default is yurt, okay? Y-E-R-T. Cool. So now he's in implementation mode. You can see it says implement. Now we can just say one of these stop phrases or the discussion mode phrases. Silence is a silence in all caps. Silence. And he's back in discussion mode. So that's how you get in and out of the two modes. If you use any protocol trigger phrase, you'll be in implementation mode. You do not have to think about this. Now, making a task doesn't have to happen when you're not in a task. Making a task can happen whenever you discover work. And I frequently will make tasks during task completion, right before context compaction. While in a task, outside of a task, I will make tasks because as soon as I discover work, I want to codify it. We're going to make one outside of a task right now. So we'll do mech, which is my... T task creation trigger phrase is M-E-K colon. I'm gonna do mech. Clean up the interface for all buttons in IO web components. Interface doesn't currently provide reliable, predictable behavior. So we're gonna make that task real quick. And so what happens is the trigger phrase is intercepted by a user prompt submit hook. It detects the trigger phrase. It loads the task creation protocol. And this protocol tells Claude how to make tasks, all the steps involved. It prescribes to do's. It makes sure that he stays on those to do's. We don't change those to do's. These are the protocol to do's. You do them this way. So the first thing it's got to do is just determine the task name. And so it's proposing a task name, fix button link interface. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, so he's copying the task template into to the task folder and making a new task. So here he filled out the task. He filled out the front matter. It's a name, branch, status created, and any submodules that are impacted. IO web is the submodule. So if you're in a super repo, this works with it. And then here's the task description, problem and goal statement. Cool. I'm happy with that. Okay, then he's saying, um, he's proposing success criteria for the task. What will be true when this task is done? Let's leave assumptions out until you know what you're dealing with. That's perfect. Okay, yep, he's adding the success criteria. And now he's gonna ask me if I wanna run the context gathering agent. This is the first of five sub agents in CC sessions. It's the most clutch one. If I couldn't have an X20 max subscription and I had to cut on tokens, this is the last thing I would cut. I think it actually saves tokens. It's gonna spend its entire context window if necessary on just making sure everything that, th that your main thread could need to know about doing this task with respect to your architecture, your patterns and your code base, everything about your code base. It's gonna extract what's relevant to this task. It's going to put it in a context manifest in the task file. This step ends up saving your agent on searching for that information and having to discover it. It points them to exactly the right place in the code base to make changes. And it's just way better. Now you can do it at task creation or task startup, doesn't matter which, but before you start working on a task, you should run the context gathering agent. So I'm gonna say yes. It ran the context gathering agent. We got the context. We'll see what that looks like on task startup, how well it did. But um, it's asked me if I wanna create a new index file for IO web tasks. So yeah, I'm gonna have it create an index for this since there wasn't one already. All right, so it's copying the index template. It's gonna create me a new task index that will be read at session start. And then it's gonna commit the task file and it finished. That's the task creation protocol. So now let's start this task. I'll show you how task startup works. So my trigger phrase is start. And then I forget what that's called. The up arrow, dude, start up, right? Colon. And then after your trigger phrase, you can use the at syntax. So we can do at M fix button link interface. What this will do is it's gonna start up the task startup protocol, which is its own set of to-dos just like task creation. Claude's gonna read the file because we used at syntax, so that's perfect. So let's go ahead and use that. So now it's calling the sessions API, which is available to you in slash commands. You can use slash sessions for like most things and there's robust help documentation. So Claude can also use a reduced version of the API for certain things. Certain things are also only available in the context of protocol. So because we're doing task startup, he can use startup load. Startup load changes your state. It adds the tasks to the state, runs a lot of other hooks. 
And after startup load, you should see that our current task will change in the status line. Boom, there it is. And then he's going to check out the task branch, which should change our Git branch in the status line as well. All right, so now um, as part of task startup, Claude's reading the context manifest and any prescribed files and line ranges that the context gathering agent found. I've loaded the context for fixing the button link interface in IO web. Here's the work I think we should accomplish. Okay, cool. So it's got to do's, it's got an implementation plan. Now I just need to approve it. So we'll say yurt and now like should be able to generally one shot this except for anything code review agent turns up at the end. So we'll see how it does. Okay, moment of truth, gang. Claudy Dottie says, all button factories now support the URL parameter with automatic handling. This is an empirical claim that Claude is making. This still works, dude. Whoa. Yeah, that looks really good. Hey, gang. The only thing is we've got text decorations on the on the A's, dog. We don't want that. We know likey text decorations. So these are just some, some light tweaks I want to the task before we finito, all right? Dude, new tab, true, false. Love it. Sick API, dude. Now that's an API. Dude, CSS bugs are the hardest bugs, and you can't convince me otherwise. Okay, and then we will just uh, use my task completion trigger phrase. I like finito. I'm never going to say it in a regular conversation. So he just ran pre-completion checks. This just checks the success criteria we originally defined for the task. Checks that we did all of that in this session or that it's all complete as evidenced by the task logs. Now he's running the code review agent. Now Claude will frequently, LLMs frequently respond with lists and you're supposed to like answer all of these in your response. You got to scroll up. It's bad UX. To solve this, I have something called iter loop, a little Easter egg trigger phrase of CC sessions that you can use, especially at code review, to deal with things a little bit better. So let's just say iter loop. And Claude says, warning one. We're going to skip that one. Code duplication across all five button factories. Yeah, let's skip it, dude. Five places. Okay, suggestion two, domain aware external link detection. Skip it. We already know not to do that, dog. All right, so now we're doing Git operations. We're just merging the task branch to the default branch that I have in my config, which is main in this case. Now we're committing in my super repo. Now that we're actually done with this task, I, I'm good to clear. Everything that needs to be known about what we just did is documented. We are committed on all of our code changes. We're in main, everything's merged, we're done. You have one slash command with CC sessions. The reason for that is that I see people adding like nine slash commands to your shit and it's like, do you really wanna cycle through all that? You do not. Now let's just use sessions help, cool. And so this shows you all of the available commands, state management, configuration, task management, sessions, config, phrases, okay? And this shows you all of the help documentation for phrases. It shows you what your phrases currently are. And so you can actually use sessions, config, phrases, add, and then the lists. So you can say, and, and the list aliases are all right here. Go, no, create, start, complete, and compact. So you can say add, go and then let's just make it do it now that's our new phrase cool so they added do it now to the go implementation mode category do it now sessions tasks idx cc sessions and that'll tell us the that'll tell us the index for cc sessions and so cool now we can see what tasks are in our index right sessions state mode off and this enters bypass mode meaning there will be no discussion implementation boundary and then we can actually just jump back right into uh, discussion mode by saying session state mode no. So no is discussion, go is implementation, off is bypass. Very simple. You could also use those explicitly. These are just aliases. It's shorthand. So you can use the API as you, as you like to add and remove phrases, to mess with state a little bit. That's how to use sessions, man. If you want to mod sessions, right? I guess like that's another thing maybe we should talk about. If you want to mod sessions, right? It's very easy to do that. And the reason is, is that there is an updated Claude file and there is a very highly discoverable API to everything. All of my files have folds, okay? So I use folds to organize, not modules. I don't use extra scripts. I just use comment folds. And then I have an NVIM plugin I built that like parses them. And you'll see what that looks like. But just to say that like, this also makes it really easy for an LLM to parse it, okay? Because all of my imports 
are neatly organized, standard lib, third party, local, okay? All of the globals, like the things we're defining, like that are true for all functions are right there. The execution of the script is right here and all the execution paths are neatly labeled, okay? And they're folded. All of the codes like that. And so if you wanna modify it, it's, it's pretty trivial to do so. Pretty trivial to do that. And you can use CC sessions to mod CC sessions, right? You can write task files about your session system. All of the runtime scripts are right there in your repo. So, and so I hope that that helps. I hope it's enjoyable for you. It's, it, ma it makes my life tremendously easier and I look forward to continuing to evolve it. Peace out. I'm toast. Bye. Bye.